Now we are ready to pull a product out. Okay. So if I say let y equal u v, it's the product of 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 two functions. Okay. So just to clarify, right? This is just kind of a, a side note that all of these things are functions of x. Okay, so y equals uv is just my shorthand way of saying y of x equals u of x times v of x. Okay, now I'm going to pull out this trick here. This trick here, right? I want to go towards thinking about this. I want to introduce this delta x thing because that's the way of me doing first principles, really. Okay, so if I say y of x plus delta x, okay, well, this on the left hand side means everywhere I see x, I should put x plus delta x, x plus a little bit. Yeah. <coughs> this is u, x plus delta x, v, x plus delta x. So far, so good? OK, now I'm actually going to, because I went through this process to know that this really means y plus delta y. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. OK. It's what happens when you evaluate it at that little bit further? Well, it's your original value plus a little bit, but now I'm going up instead of across. Okay. I can do the same thing for these guys, it's just with different names. Okay. So I'm going to have u plus delta u and v plus delta v. Okay. And you see what I meant, by the way, when I said, like, this can get more confusing, not less confusing. It's almost death by symbols. Believe me, there are worse <laughs> versions of this. I'm giving you a simple one. Okay. So if you've checked out, that's fine. What you really need to know is how to use it, but I really like where this goes. Watch. These things, remember, they're actual lengths. They're actual distances. Just like, you know, dy and dx and that kind of thing, the chain rule. They're actual fractions, right? So this I can expand just like I expand any other algebra, right? Just expand the brackets. What am I going to get? U v plus u delta v. Now, I could write the next term as delta u V, but that's a little bit confusing because then it's like, what's the delta on? Is it on U or is it on UV? So I want to avoid doing that. So I'm going to write this as V delta U. That's, that's those two together. Does that make sense? Then my last piece, I've got two delta things hanging out. Delta U, delta V. They are both very, very, very tiny distances, but they're there. Okay. Now, just pause for a second. Make sure we've expanded this right-hand side correctly. Two by two, four terms, all checks out. You happy? But there's something I can do with this. This is the left-hand side, is it not? Do you see some common terms you can take out? Look carefully. I only have a few lines on the board. What was my very first line? By definition, y is the product of those two whatever functions they are, u and v. And I have y here. Ooh. And I have u, v there. See that? Yeah. Okay, so I am going to eliminate it from both sides. I have delta y equals this. Okay, pause. Now, remember where I'm going. You, you know where I'm going because I wrote it down before. I'm going here. Whoops. Okay, this is where I'm going. Okay, so I, I need to do a couple of things to this. Number one, I've got all these deltas. I don't want deltas. I want, dashes. I want well, yeah, yeah, dashes, which is really d on dx. Yep, that's what I'm going towards. In order to do that, get rid of the deltas. I need to apply limits. You see, that's the difference between deltas, and when you've got d properly, the the difference is the limit. Okay, uh, but not only that. Do you notice that here? Wow, this looks so close to that line with one problem have this interloper hanging around. Do you see that u delta v corresponds to u v dash? You see that? u, u, this delta v will become dv on dx. It will become that. That's right. And this guy, v delta u, corresponds to v u dash, v du on dx. They, they make sense. They look like they should be there. But what's this guy doing over here? So to show you where he goes, <clears throat> I have one huge missing piece, right? I have all these deltas, but I'm missing the really important one. 
what I'm actually differentiating with respect to. Does that make sense? I've got no x's anywhere, right? So I'm going to divide everything by delta x. I'm going to divide this one by delta x. I'm going to divide this one by delta x. This one by delta x. Now when I come to this guy on the end, okay, something interesting happens. I could divide it by delta x. That, that would work, okay? But I have two things here, right? It's kind of like chain rule where I had two things on the top. I should have two things on the bottom, shouldn't I? So it actually kind of makes more sense to divide this by delta x. And in addition, like this is part of a derivative. And then this guy should also be part of a derivative. Do you see that? So I've got a delta u on delta x. That would become du on dx. And then I have delta v on delta x, which would become dv on dx. Ah, but I have a problem. Th this is a product, right? So this term on the end, I have not actually divided by delta x, have I? I've divided it by delta x squared. So I, I've, I've, I haven't done the same thing to that as I have to all these guys. So to compensate, and this is actually this stroke of genius, which is very hard to see otherwise, to compensate, I multiply by delta x on the end. Now that's a bit weird. You're like, why, why divide by an extra time and then multiply by another time to counteract that? Okay. Well, here's why. Here's why. What's the difference between having it in deltas and having it in de delta v, delta y on delta x versus dy on dx? Um, and the answer is the limit. It's the limit, right? Okay. So I'm going to apply limits now to everything. Yeah. Everything. Watch. Let's 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 write it all out. Oh. Yeah, you see it, right? Okay. Uh, okay, limit as delta x approaches zero, because that's what I'm going to do to everything to get some derivatives out of this, right? Delta y on delta x, okay, there's a limit. The limit as delta x approaches zero of this thing, okay? Now, see that u there, right? It's, it's independent, but I'm going I'm to write it in there so you can see. And I'm just going to write it outside that fraction. So this is actually a different guy. Okay. Plus the limit. There's a lot of limits here. Okay. But they're all the same limit. Uh, v delta u on delta x. One more. Limit. That guy's going to approach zero. And then I have this mess. Okay. Delta u on delta x. Delta v on delta x. And then delta x. Okay. Now, let's just go through this one step at a time. By definition, that's dy on dx. See that? It's dy on dx. Okay. Now, what happens in here, right? What happens as delta x approaches 0 to this? u is just u, whatever u is, right? So we u, but this guy on the other hand, this is the derivative. This is the gradient function. dv on dx. Right? So let me say that again. You know when we thought about like, you know, what's happening to a normal function, a normal function, like say, say this guy, right? As delta x approaches zero, you're just approaching the function itself. Okay? So the limit as delta x approaches zero of u is just gonna be u. Okay? So that's why he just stays there unchanged. Whereas this guy, this is exactly this is a rise over run situation. Okay? So therefore, as the rise over run tends toward that infinitesimally small spot, you don't get a secant anymore, you get the actual tangent. That's the gradient of the tangent. Oh. Same thing happens here. Now, look at this troublesome guy on the end. He's always a troubled child in every family. He goes to zero because of this guy, which we were like, why is he there? What's he doing? Well, he's multiplying everything. Vanishes away. I, I could write plus zero, but I don't need to. That's so genius. And oh. this means that y dash is that. Well, I mean, I'll write. I'll write this one first because that is v u dash, and that's u v dash. Okay. I think that's amazing. 